Some 30 years after becoming an independent country, what are the most important developments and the main challenges that remain for Croatia? Croatia is a relatively, in, in its modern uh, uh, shape, uh, uh, in its modern configuration politically, it's a relatively new country, but it's a very old nation, a nation which has been existing on, on, the, on its land since the 7th century. Uh, so the, uh, and having been uh, independent uh, once upon a time during the Middle Ages, and after that being part of different empires, mainly Austro-Hungarian Empire, then being in Yugoslavia, in first Yugoslavia, and after the Second World War, ending up in the in the communist Yugoslavia, and by the collapse of communism and by disintegration of former Yugoslavia, and through its war of independence in the 90s, Croatia became independent, and the uh, started truly to prosper by being independent, and the uh, our independence has always been very closely um, uh, related with us uh, wishing to rejoining uh, to rejoin the uh, Western community of nations. So uh, one of the uh, strategic pri strategic priority of us uh, from the beginning of the uh, independence in the early 90s was to join European Union and NATO, which is what we did, which is what, what we did first NATO and then European Union, which is um, elevating uh, our security when it comes to NATO, being the most powerful military alliance in history, uh, which is very relevant uh, today, uh, given the crisis we are we are uh, undergoing in Europe with Russia's brutal aggression on Ukraine, and with with all with all its consequences and unforeseeable uh, developments, which may be very critical. So for us, it was of essential importance to be a member of NATO, being in a strong alliance with our European Western partners with other countries uh, of the former Soviet, uh, uh, former communist bloc, which have also joined the, uh, the uh, NATO. And uh, maybe in the first place to be in a strong transatlantic link with the United States. Uh, US, as you know, is a uh, fundamental part of, of NATO, clearly the most, the strongest country in the world and the, uh, the engine of, of, of our alliance. And all that is now extremely important dealing with the crisis we have now and really dealing with the crisis we have been having before and dealing with any other crisis which may come up in the future. So that goal of achieving our security uh, within the Western Alliance was uh, one of the strategic goals which has been achieved. And the second one was European Union. The in integration into European Union was a more complex affair because it needed a full harmonization of the our society, our economy, our standards, uh, the level of democracy, the level of human rights, uh, functioning of free market, uh, monetary system, and we did it. So since 2013, we are a member of the European Union. We are the, uh, the, the latest country which has entered. Nobody entered after us. Uh, there are now some other countries in the Western Balkans, primarily, uh, uh, which are negotiating uh, European Union accession. So, uh, European accession, European Union, our membership in the European Union has elevated also our security, our st prosperity, stability, and has given us uh, a, a new, uh, uh, it, it has acted as a force multiplier when it comes to uh, our relations with the world. Ethnic tension, or more precisely, ethnic nationalist rhetoric and inflamed religious narratives played an important part in the Balkan Wars of the 90s. How has Croatia been able to move past these narratives, build a new country and reconcile? It's never, it's never easy, uh, particularly when you had a, a, such a war as was the one we have been facing in the 90s. We have been exposed to brutal aggression by the Yugoslav uh, Serbian-led army and the Serbian paramilitaries. At a certain point at the beginning of the war, almost a third of the country has been occupied. Uh, we had, at, at the time, we were hosting half a million, out of a country of four million, we were, forced, uh, we were hosting uh, uh, half a million of internally displaced uh, persons, as well as the um, uh, People, uh, re refugees from Bosnia and Herzegovina, which was exposed to the same to the same aggression. So it was, you know, the, um, uh, the wholesale destruction, uh, human casualties, 
and it was not it was not easy. Uh, it, it was it was a, at the time it was you know that it was a political war, a, a idea of uh, then uh, Belgrade uh, regime of Slobodan Milosevic, uh, which wished to save uh, in the first place Yugoslavia by by uh, by violent means. And then after that, having failed to save Yugoslavia, they were then trying to get as much territory as they were able to from Croatia, from Bosnia, Herzegovina, and ultimately they failed in doing it. And the whole thing ended, as you know, with Slobodan Milosevic at the end being uh, extradited to The Hague, to the War Crimes Tribunal, and the, where he died before before uh, before his sentence. So the uh, it has been it has been really um, um, some hard time. But the, that that time has uh, also served to uh, strengthen Croatian national identity, and the, it has demonstrated that, that 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 we deserve to have a, an independent country, but not independent country which would which would not be uh, uh, fully respectful to human rights, to minority rights. And I can assure you, I mean, what uh, I was part particularly of the. Our, our, as the chief negotiator for our NATO accession, and also participant in EU uh, accession process, uh, the uh, to forge a country which is uh, uh, fully democratic, which is respectful of all human rights, including the rights of the minorities, including the rights of different minorities. For example, in the uh, in the Croatian says that was the uh, case of the Serbian minority. Uh, ultimately, uh, uh, with this whole set of measures, we have been able to achieve uh, a high level of of uh, respect uh, 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 of all these requirements, because they would we, we would have not been accepted in the EU if that had not been the case, and that ultimately would be the case. So we are very proud of that achievement. For example, presently. Presently, and this is not the case that only for this government, some previous governments that were doing, were having that as well. We have a, one of the coalition partners in the in the government is a Serbian minority party. So the uh, the, the things are the things are never perfect in a human society, but we are very proud that of uh, of, of, the, of a level of reconciliation we have achieved, we have been able to achieve through through efforts. Our efforts, through efforts, through efforts on, on, on the Serbian side as well. That, but the things are going back, and uh, there are there are oscillations. For example, now we see that the the, the state of Bosnia Herzegovina, which was uh, supposed to be uh, moving faster, is not moving that fast. Some things are not yet fully resolved. They we would like to see them also joining European Union and NATO, and at the time they are still having a lot of internal internal problems including the uh, relationship between the three constituent nations Croatian Serbs and the Bosnian Muslims and uh, at this at this moment what is what we think it's of a particular importance is that the Croatian community in Bosnia as being the smallest is under the greatest pressure to uh, uh, to have to to uh, uh, see uh, their inherent rights being 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 trampled upon uh, uh, one of the measures which uh, we think it's necessary to move Bosnia uh, forward is to uh, uh, reach a consensus of a new uh, electoral law, which will ensure an adequate representation of all three constituent nations. So this is this is something on which we are working very closely with our European and American partners. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I would say uh, uh, when you look at it's ne it's never perfect. When you have uh, when you have a legacy of conflict, when you have a legacy of brutal conflict in some other ca under cases, I was, for example, very much as, as formerly as a journalist, I was I used to report from Northern Ireland, so I know that case, and the uh, it is also an amazing level of reconciliation with which has been achieved in Northern Ireland, thanks to the international mediation, to the efforts of. The governments of Britain, uh, governments of Ireland, and the U.S. Medi mediation with the Good Friday Agreement, but we, we have seen with Brexit that also, you know, the we have to get oh, a good care needs to be taken in order not to jeopardize the the achievements of reconciliation. So the, uh, we are very proud of what has been achieved, and uh, we are confident that we can reinforce 
reinforce the, the reconciliation and the good neighborhood, good neighborly uh, relations with all our countries in the neighborhood, including Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, all of them. And we also, we are, we are maybe the, the greatest advocate of, of seeing these countries also joining the European Union and uh, being, uh, being uh, uh, also reinforcing the reconciliation within a, within a wider uh, democratic European framework. How does Croatia perceive the current geopolitical situation in the Balkans and what is the position, if there is one, to lift its neighboring countries up? Uh, out of the um, uh, all uh, countries of former Yugoslavia, Slovenia and Croatia, Croatia were able to join both NATO and the European Union. Uh, Northern Macedonia and uh, Montenegro were able to join uh, NATO, which is very important for their stability, which we support wholeheartedly. Uh, Serbia is uh, negotiating, Serbia has uh, declared that it does not have uh, intention to join NATO, uh, but they are negotiating accession to the EU. Uh, they, they, they are facing some hurdles. One of them is to resolve relationship between Kosovo and Serbia, as you have said yourself. Um, no, unfortunately, nothing much is happening these days. In terms of any positive development, uh, there are a lot of pressure from the uh, U.S., from the uh, European Union, from for, for them to reach an agreement. Uh, it's not easy. We will see what will be happening. But what is happening at this moment is that the that the uh, the region of Western Balkans has also become a very much a contested battleground uh, for the uh, Russian interests. They have been trying to project their influence in the region, particularly in Serbia, but in other places. Uh, China is very much present uh, when you're talking about Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, the uh, particularly the Bosnian Muslim part has been exposed to the variety of interests and influences from the Middle East. So there are a lot of players in the region, and we think that the in order to counterbalance these these influences, which are not uh, helpful, uh, we need to have a more robust Euro-Atlantic agenda, more robust US, uh, NATO, EU uh, uh, involvement in these countries. Talking about Serbia, Serbia, you know, Serbia is now in a, in a bit of a bit of an, an, an easy choice. That, that choice should not have been easy, uh, uh, given the fact that they are negotiating the um, uh, accession with the EU. But they also, they also, uh, uh, they have been, and uh, I guess they try to stay close with Russia, which is not easy because, you know, what Russia did was certainly a major crime in the international affairs. They have made a blatant, uh, brutal aggression, territorial, against the other country with the view of uh, changing its uh, government, uh, occupying the country, uh, annexing parts of the countries, so we, we don't yet know what ex exactly uh, Putin's agenda in Ukraine is, but in any case, it is agenda which is totally upsetting the international order and international law, and the, I mean, infringing upon other countries' sovereignty, it's a major international crime, and that is what they did, and that is what they are doing. So they, the uh, international community needs to stand fast against such an attempt, which may create a very uh, dangerous, extremely dangerous precedent. So that involves uh, uh, implementing sanctions against Russia. The European Union is doing that. Many other countries are doing that. US is at the forefront of doing it. Well, Serbia has a problem of aligning with these policies. When, if they wish to um, get into the European Union, they should follow the uh, what has been decided uh, within the European Union. So this is a problem they have. And the, obviously, that is also, I, I would guess, a very mo a moral problem. You have to have a stance against what's happening in Ukraine, what is happening in terms of the political intentions, and also in terms of how it is happening. This is we, we see a very clearly indiscriminate destruction of an entire nation, killing of wanton killing of civilians, uh, innocent civilians. Uh, committing war crimes, so we have to have we have we have to take a strong stance against that, by by arming by by helping Ukraine defend itself, liberating itself, 
and the uh, punishing Russia for what is doing. And the uh, uh, what, what what we are seeing is truly a remarkable uh, unity of major actors in the international arena uh, standing together to uh, to uh, not let uh, Russia uh, succeeding in in its in its, in its brutal attempt and uh, to see uh, Ukraine surviving and basically not creating a again as i said an extremely dangerous precedent for the uh, having uh, instead of having a, an international system based upon rule of law and respect of each other uh, having a free for all uh, like going back into the uh, into the middle ages this will not this will not fly what is Croatia's perception and position regarding the enlargement of both NATO and the EU? How is the Croatia-Russia relationship changing? And how is the close relationship between Serbia and Russia affecting the balance of power in the region? Uh, that has changed, obviously, not because of us, but because of what Russia did. And the, uh, Russia has, uh, has to live with, has to suffer the consequences. The consequences are very, uh, very harsh sanctions against Russian banks. We have been having also uh, uh, one particular bank which was operating in, in Croatia that has been taken over and liquidated. Uh, all the uh, Croatia is implementing the full sanctions of so full six packages of very harsh European financial, financial trade, investment, uh, personal uh, sanctions against the, uh, the uh, uh, Russia's leadership, Russia's business interests, Russia's oligarchs, uh, we are not. Uh, we are one of the countries which is not very much reliant upon Russia's gas. We are able to survive without Russian gas, thanks to the, our, our domestic uh, sources, and thanks to the LNG terminal we have. So we are, and also we have never been very much reliant upon Russia's Russia, Russia's oil. Some European countries, as you know, are, and they have they have a problem now. So we we have been, and well, it's, it has been a long term. A European Union policy to uh, not to be uh, so much reliant upon Russia's, uh, Russia as a major supplier of, of, of uh, fossil fuels. And within the uh, European Green Deal plan, we should be getting rid of fossil fossil fuels at all uh, uh, in, in a long term strategic sense. So the uh, but, but in order to survive in a short term sense, we have to have we have to have a, a reliable supply of gas and that and oil and that that we need to get from alternative sources not from russia not from not not uh, buying uh, russian fossil fuel uh, uh, and giving them money they they're using to uh, kill uh, ukrainian civilians so this is our this is our firm firm stance and the, clearly because of russia's behavior uh, our diplomatic our political relations have changed uh, we were also forced to expel a number of Russian diplomats from from Zagreb. Uh, and, and that is an unfortunate development. We all have have been hoping that Russia would be a part of the uh, global economic and political system, a partner, if not an ally. Uh, when the when the communism collapsed, when when the, when the Soviet Union disintegrated, but. Clearly, under the present leadership of uh, President Putin, uh, Russia has ch has chosen a different track, unfortunately, and we uh, we cannot wish it away. We have to face it, and I guess we are, we are facing it with the dual dual uh, with a set of measures stemming from the unity we have been able to to foster, and this is sanctions against Russia for what it, what it did and what it is doing, and the uh, uh, helping Ukraine defend itself uh, financially uh, accepting refugees Croatia for example has accepted more than 15,000 uh, refugees from Ukraine giving them all the rights and the uh, to work to uh, children to go to school and we uh, we certainly expect more more of them to come and there are no limits of how much we will be accepting them we will be accepting them as, as, as much as needed this is truly a human tragedy, and we, we deeply feel it because, as you said, we we have experienced that all all that uh, ourselves uh, uh, some 30, 25 years ago, and also the reinforcing NATO, reinforcing NATO, reinforcing for front frontline states 
which are uh, exposed the most, reinforcing them. We are also increasing our military budget, acquiring acquiring some some uh, important uh, 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 parts of uh, uh, weapon systems, as buying buying the, uh, for example, multi-role uh, aircraft, uh, French uh, Rafale. Uh, we are also buying, we buying some other other stuff. We have been we have been supporting Ukraine also with the arms supplies. We are considering new uh, new new supplies which are needed uh, within the framework of, of the um, uh, our, our joint response to the Russia's aggression. And the uh, as you know, as it is stand in the North Atlantic Treaty, uh, NATO NATO has an open door policy. Uh, vis a vis um, uh, um, all, all countries wishing and able to, to, to accede. And it, 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 it should be a sovereign decision by any given country to move wherever it, it wants to move. Nobody should be having a veto over, over a sovereign decision of a democratically elected government. So we are seeing, we are seeing, uh, we are seeing uh, maybe a uh, very important uh, uh, considerations presently in uh, Scandinavian countries, which had been which have been before neutral, such as Finland and Sweden. Now they are very much contemplating what to do next, whether they should join, join NATO, and uh, other countries in our region, in, in our region, Western Balkans and other countries. So this is this is something to be discussed among the allies and the, uh, to be decided upon the country uh, for, by the countries. Uh, but by the countries in, in question, I mean we we cannot go back into the, sorry we cannot be we shouldn't be going back into the old-fashioned spheres of influence, uh, uh, conflict, resolving resolving disputes by uh, by violence, particularly not by the uh, indiscriminate use of violence, uh, killing killing uh, killing thousands of civilians, which is what Russia is doing presently and clearly what they intend to do in, 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 in at least in the near future. From the Croatian perspective, what are the most pressing matters the world faces today? Having said what we have said on the present conflict, which is which is ongoing and which is um, unpredictable and un unforeseeable, we may see some even uh, uh, more, more critical developments, hopefully not. Uh, but if we can leave that aside, but it, it, that conflict has indeed been a game changer, not only for Europe, but for the entire world. Uh, the um, you know that the uh, World Bank has uh, lowered the uh, estimate of global growth by almost half. So we are we are and maybe the uh, developed world would be able to uh, weather that storm better. But the effects upon the, the, the developing countries may be, may be, may be are usually m much sharper in terms of the uh, disruption, disruptions of the global supply chain, in terms of possible lack of foodstuff, grain, uh, some minerals, um, energy. So we are entering into uncharted waters, uh, uh, which, are, which are very uh, critical because of this conflict and which which have, which have been critical even before and without this conflict by the effects of the pandemic by the disruption of the of global uh, supply chain by uh, uh, massive suffering of people under the pandemic by uh, uh, reduced growth and and certainly um, maybe uh, priority among all priorities in strategic sense, is to face jointly. No, no country alone can do that. We, all, we all together have to have to uh, maybe uh, uh, address the uh, uh, issue equally and, and jointly. And that is the, the the climate change. Climate change for us, Croatia, for the European Union, that has been really the priority of priorities to reduce our uh, carbon footprint, to get rid of fossil fuels, to go green. To stop, to reverse, to uh, to uh, at least to, to stop, to begin with global warming, and then eventually to really reverse it before it reaches the stage of no return, uh, which would provoke massive suffering again. Maybe first in the developing countries, uh, but affecting us all, 
and we need a global solidarity and global joint action on that. So that 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 remains a, a, a priority as ever. Second thing is to uh, you know to promote global growth, to uh, promote global uh, uh, system based upon uh, rules based system, not force based system in which the uh, a handful of uh, or, or more uh, uh, local uh, hege hegemony or any kind of uh, uh, aggressiveness uh, would be tolerated and would be a, a, a rule of the game. We are strongly opposed to that. We are, you know, really supporting the idea of a global, of an international community, of global community, of solidarity between us all, or, or solidarity between the, uh, particularly between the north and the south. Of necessity to to try to uh, uh, bring uh, societies to an uh, to a higher level of development of of security human rights. I think the issue of human rights is as 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 urgent as ever. Not only in relation to the ongoing conflict, but in any given uh, corner of the world, uh, dealing with the. Uh, uh, dealing with the, with the health challenges, I think that the pandemic has taught us a lesson that the uh, we are all connected. No country alone was able to deal with the pandemic. It, it it required really an international response. At the beginning, as as we all know, that joint response was was not adequate. To use an understatement, step by step, we have reached a level of cooperating on dealing with this pandemic jointly. This pandemic, unfortunately, may not be the last challenge of the sort we, we may be facing. Uh, uh, new technologies, new technologies offer a, a lot of hope for development, for em empowerment, but also the uh, things like uh, 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 uncontrolled power which may be used by individuals, wealthy, wealthy individuals, if you wish, or by the repressive states. That is something we have to have in mind to, to, and to ensure a, a balanced development in the world, uh, promoting uh, human rights in the sense of gender, gender equality, uh, 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 access, to, access, access to health, access to information, so we have a lot of we have a whole even with, without the present war we have a whole set of challenges <coughs> sorry which are challenges for us all almost equally and challenges which needs to be addressed jointly